welcome to Maya Studio. Here's a look at the rough sketch for what I'm going to be working on today. It is a cover for a baby pregnancy planner and you can see I blocked in some of the initial shapes and things I want to uh, have mapped out where they're going to go on the cover. And then we go in here for the details. It's going to blur here a little bit while my hand's working on the face. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but it should uh, be uh, more visually stimulating here in a bit. So today I wanted to talk about planners and give a little bit of insight into how I do them. And um, yeah, and so if kind of that's something you're interested in or interested in how I got into it, um, I thought it would be an interesting topic to cover. So there are quite a few options out there, whether what I had done before with at least notebooks, not planners. I had a stationery shop on Etsy with cards and notebooks and mugs and things like that. And I, I was kind of disappointed the notebooks didn't do so well because I'm such a notebook girly and I was really excited to create my own and I really wanted those to move out so I could create more but they just never really took off so I didn't get to explore that too much. But what I had done for then was to, uh, I used Shutterfly primarily and I tried some other print companies and I kept all the inventory myself so I could package it all pretty and do uh, personal touches to the customer and all that. But again, because they didn't sell well, I kind of ended up with quite a bit extra by the time I finally shut down the shop. And then another option is something you can do with a print-on-demand, either shop or something like uh, KDP on Amazon. And that's something which I've been doing now. Uh, before I had just had printing companies who provided uh, lined page notebooks and I could customize the front cover. Um, I did find Lulu Press, which I really do like them, particularly if you want to like draft uh, uh, an example for a planner or notebook or even novels. And they have other distribution options and things of that sort as well that I haven't quite looked into. But that's another avenue you can go down and they allow you to customize your interior if you want or you can find their uh, templates for general lined pages, dotted pages, things like that. And what I've worked on with my planners uploading them to KDP is I create my covers uh, in traditional watercolor like I used to do but I also uh, can overlay that's a full wrap around. In my case, I, I do want to play with the back cover maybe later, but at this point I like that I just kind of has a wash of watercolor on one side since it's usually quite busy on the front um, with these full scenes that I do of having uh, these women in their space and their environment related to the topic of the planner. In this case, a pregnancy planner. So it's a mama in her space. The baby things are collecting around the room. There's the little crib and, oh, what's that little thing that dangles over? Mobile, right? A uh, little mobile. And then just some calming plants and she has her tea and a comfy chair with some pillows and just a wrapped up bun. Uh, can't, you know, put too much fuss into that, something comfortable, little slippers. Uh, so yeah, so I get to personalize the cover how I want, and I do that traditionally with watercolor and upload it to uh, make into a cover and upload that as a PDF. Then for my interior pages, I work in Canva and I'll usually base off of an existing template rip relating to the subject I'm using. And then adjust and tweak how I want that to look. Add in some elements to tie into the front covers. Oftentimes it's something botanical. In this case, I mix some botanical and baby elements that are kind of on the orange and yellow uh, scheme. 
and I do different sections so uh, kind of you kind of have your daily or weekly planner depending on what I decide to do here I have for example I have appointment logs uh, sugar level tracker uh, blood pressure tracker uh, baby shower guest list and gift list uh, nursery ideas things like that and so I have sections and then the pages I have customized to accommodate um, those sections and so I get to play with the interior as much as I want and however I want to do that and then I upload that um, as a PDF uh, as well for the interior to KDP so they'll ask you for your interior manuscript uh, and then in this case it's considered a low content book which means it doesn't have excessive amount of words uh, such as a novel or a, uh, a novella or something of that sort and it has repeating pages so even though it maybe it does have some text or if it was a prompt book or something like that it would still be considered low content but um, in the kind of community of low content books this would be considered something more uh, closely related to a medium content as they say because I do try to diversify and have different things going on but not fully because not each page is different like uh, prompt books or ones that do adjust to make each page a little different um, so while still not high content which would be more for proper uh, books to read um, they would be in uh, in KDPs, they only have the two options of high content or low content. So either way, you would select the low content. Now, often KDP will come back and say there is an issue here or there. If it's outside the margins or you miss something or if you didn't have the bleed, um, extend past the page according to their guidelines. So do look at their guidelines and take your time to work on your files to make sure they're set up and especially your margins because it is a pain to have to adjust all those pages to fit the margins um, or if you really worked on your cover to and you can't stretch it or shrink it that could be a problem so do save yourself the headache if you go down that route by uh, looking at KDP's guidelines but I have enjoyed it and I have uh, appreciated um, the process of it. It's fairly easy. You type up your title and description, set your price, all that good stuff. Uh, make sure you incorporate keywords so the algorithm finds it. And then from there, once it does publish, it's kind of up to you to market it. Uh, some people do well without marketing on social media or things and do focus on keywords and making sure they research their niche and that just Amazon will pick them up. That hasn't been the case for me so much. I really do get it, uh, most of the traffic through when I drive to it. I don't know if that's a failing on my part with my keyword research. I have tried. Um, but also they say you need to try to upload several if you want to really make this work and figure out what works for the algorithm at the time. So that is what I'm doing and it's also just a, a side project right now while I'm in school and don't have any big projects uh, to be working on these planners because I really do love them and something I would love to share with women and uh, their passions or their area in life that they're working on trying to keep organized. So, to talk a bit about this one in particular, you can see I'm in the painting process at this point, and I went with a neutral theme initially. We'll kind of change it up a bit later, because while I had a poll on Facebook, one for which sketch they liked the best for the planner, and then for what color scheme I should use, they felt pastels with blues and purples and common colors like that for kind of a baby uh, nursery room or uh, mama thinking about her baby would be appropriate. And while I agree appropriate, 
uh, I didn't want to lean too much into boy or girl or have it too balanced with blues and pinks. Um, and so I did end up kind of going against them on that one because I was finding on Pinterest these beautiful neutral baby nurseries with just uh, kind of wicker and browns and creams. And I loved it. And it's so, so neutral and so pleasant and calming. I was getting frustrated and almost really backed out of this one because while pleasant, it wasn't going the direction I had initially set out for with uh, kind of this tan beige color that I was having a hard time differentiating them enough and I didn't want to go too brown on things. Um, so what really will pull it together is when I did this dress. It's like, okay, I wanted to pull in a new color, but still keep things neutral. And I pull in this orange. Uh, on top of my mom suggested that I add more textures. So you see the blanket there has like a thick, thick cable knit. And then the stool, I added some texture. I'm gonna go in and add texture to the uh, elephant there to be kind of like he's a also knitted um, and a little bit of texture to that little lamp there but yeah when I added the orange it gave it a completely new feel while maintaining the calm I wanted and I felt that's the color that's gonna pull this together so I added to the curtains to offset this kind of blah, uh, yellowish thing I had going on. And I feel I overdid it a bit when I started adding these shadows, but at the same time I do kind of like it. And so I end up deepening her dress a bit more to offset it there. And as you can see here is kind of the final look at it on uh, the watercolor before I upload it to the computer and then here we are and you can find the full thing over on Amazon.